Today we're going to be talking about uh, primer for uh, residential paint. So here we've got some uh, Sherwin-Williams high build primer and then we've got some uh, Benjamin Moore fresh start primer here. If the uh, French side's still legible, the uh, English side's covered up. But anyway, so I'll tell you right now, I prefer the uh, Benjamin Moore, even though it costs three times the price of the Sherwin Williams. It's like $75 a gallon for this stuff versus about $25 a gallon if you buy a five gallon pail of the Sherwin Williams. So this is kind of similar to uh, if you're going to skim coat some drywall. It's got a lot of solids in it and you can sand it down nice and to me it's a high build primer. It's kind of like flat ceiling paint where you sand it and it rains down material and you can get a, a good finish out of it. The uh, Sherwin-Williams, I don't know why they call it a high build primer. It's just uh, white glue. It's not paint. <laughs> it's really gross stuff. And uh, so it says you can roll it with a 3 8 nap. And half the time the roller is just skidding around the room. But you can kind of get a finish out of it. The uh, Sherwin, or sorry, the Benjamin Moore is actually drips kind of like paint. They're both latex paint. So this room is uh, oil-based paint. It was probably painted in the uh, 80s, I guess. I don't know. When the last time it was done, so I cut it in using the uh, Benjamin Moore. And I didn't like the price of it. So I went over to Sherwin-Williams and got a, a bunch of their primer. And as soon as I started to apply it, I'm like, oh my god, what is this stuff? So uh, it says you can roll it on. It doesn't say not to use it on oil-based paint. But uh, anyway, we'll do a little sanding test here in a second. But for application, like you're going to need a, a pail opener is kind of handy for opening these pails. And uh, you can get a spout. These are like multi-use spouts. So for like the bare paint, you would screw it in and it's kind of messy. With the Sherwin-William, you just remove that plug and you, you rip off this ring. You can jam it into the plug and you can pour it. But it's like pouring a bucket of mud. You can actually mix uh, like 90 minute powder with this stuff. Actually, no, that's not quite accurate. You can mix uh, some drywall powder not fast curing powder, but anyway, into the paint in order to give it even more thicker consistency if you wanted to do something creative with it. But for me, I wasn't too excited with it. So when I cut in a room, I brush in all the corners and then I roll with the little guy as close to the corners as I can. So that when I come back with my uh, regular roller, I can get relatively close without really trying to get super close and making a mess. And uh, so I use the mixing gadget here for mixing the pail. So it's a bit more of pain in the butt to get going. And I don't think you could even brush that stuff on. It's kind of a weird gooey consistency. And uh, I won't be using it again for uh, painted walls. When I got it, I told the lady I wanted to do a mix of uh, drywall repair and uh, painting walls and that's what they gave me but not too excited about it. I'm sure it has its uses but not probably not for the residential world that we're looking at. So if you look at this stuff it's uh, you can see right through it it's got uh, a bit of a texture to it which you may or may not like depending on what you're going for but it's not high build like It's just like you can sand it with one pass and then it's completely smooth. Like there's nothing to it. It's just cheap paint. Whereas in this room, it's only being cut in when you sand it. All right, there's just a lot more to sand and you can get a, a better final texture looks better. This is not quite as much light in it. 
this room here. But it's just a much better paint and it goes on nice. The uh, Sherwin-Williams is like all gooey. It starts off bubbly, but it, it smooths out on its own. The bubbles go away. And it's really messy. Like it's just when you're doing the ceiling, it's like raining down on top of you. It's not very enjoyable. So if you're thinking about using it and you're not a professional painter, I'd say a pass. I wouldn't be buying it again. I prefer using a Benjamin Moore and then using a good paint over top of it. Like I don't like the uh, two-in-one concept. Like you're better off to prime all your walls because you got to prime all your patches anyway. Otherwise it's going to look kind of funny. The sheen's going to be all off. So I recommend using something like a high build primer if your walls have got imperfections like small scratches and stuff. Like I go through the room and I mud it up and fix things as necessary. I had some big uh, blowouts here so I used some hot mud and then some uh, actually just hot mud. I didn't need to do any spackling or anything like that on top of it. So you got to prime it otherwise it's going to suck up your paint and it's going to look funny. And in this room I didn't do a very good job on the trim because I'm ripping the trim out after I've done the uh, priming. Just going to protect the uh, carpet. And you can see that there's a lot of spatter. Normally when I paint it's not like that. It's not like flinging paint all over the place. But with the Sherwin-Williams we're just flying all over the place. So not a fan. Hopefully I've helped you avoid some frustration. So like you'd have to do two coats of that to get the same as one coat of the uh, Benjamin Moore. So like what's the point? It's going to end up being less of a cost savings and it's more work so why bother? So anyway hopefully that's uh, helpful. Thank you for watching. Alright so we're chugging along doing the second coat of paint in this room. The ceiling is done. I'm just working on the uh, wall. I don't know if you can see the bubbles. It's kind of like when you put uh, drywall mud over a uh, painted surface, it bubbles up. But the uh, good news is that this, you don't need to do anything. It, the bubbles just go away on their own. So there's nothing to get stressed out about. First time I used this paint, I wasn't too excited about it. And I should confirm that this is the uh, Sherwin-Williams paint that I've been going on about how I don't like it. Best way to get rid of paint is to use it. You never pour that stuff down the toilet, it would just plug up, <laughs> it's never going to go away. So I'm just going to do another coat in here, two coats in the other bedroom, and then for my kitchen, which I'm also doing, I'm not buying any more of this crap. I bought three more gallons of the Sherwin-William Fresh Start, so I'm going to be using that. That's, uh, like I said, that's the way to go. So I'm going to paint this room, paint uh, the other room over here, then we'll pop back and see what the final coat is but like even after the second coat here you can still see the fresh start I did the corners in so that kind of tells you you're going to need like three coats of the Sherwin-William to make up for one coat of the Benjamin Moore it's a third of the price three times the work I don't know if you could spray it or something I don't know like I said there's got to be an application for it otherwise they just stop making it but uh, for me, it is not the stuff. Second room is now primed. It's kind of dissatisfying to spend your evening doing this and you're, it's like you're lathering mayonnaise all over the walls. <laughs> but anyway, here we are. So it's something. Pail's still not empty, so I'm going to keep wasting time getting rid of it tomorrow night. It's getting humid in here as it dries, as expected. This room here is uh, drying off. This is where the bubbles were I was showing you previously. They have gone away. It took two coats to um, prime the metal box. Like normally when you whip over that with a can of the roller of paint, it just coats in the first coat. It takes two coats to do a, a metal box, which is not great. Um, corners. They still look kind of weird because they're darker or I cut them in. It's prime better than the uh, two coats. 
Although it's not quite as noticeable now. But still, like I said, like if you're going to spend your time and money and effort, just use uh, a better paint. Like I'm a decent painter. Like I used uh, a bare paint in this room here, hallway. And it worked out okay. It was a little bit runny. I'm trying to think if it was Aura. It's like your second best paint that I used in this area and it worked out pretty good but it was like a little bit runny and it was like 75 bucks a gallon so I wanted to try something else that's why I was kind of checking out Sherwin-Williams for ceiling paint I got this Promar 400 it's supposed to be super flat and uh, extra white they told me to use a three-quarter nap roller on this and to like uh, wrap the roller in painter's tape and then rip the tape off with a woven roller, I think it was called, so that uh, you get a nice texture with it. And the lady said uh, it'll keep a wet edge. So that, uh, dreading and looking forward to using that next, because that's sort of the next step. I'm hoping it works out good, because it's also super cheap compared to Benjamin Moore. But uh, my mileage will vary, I guess. So you can see the ceiling, the results I got in here with the Benjamin Moore. Not too many uh, edges visible, but in the bigger room next adjacent you can see some visible edges. So I wanted to try to up my game on that. The bare ceiling paint was absolutely the worst. It dries as it comes off the roller. I don't know if you need to use like a one inch nap roller to keep it wet or what the deal is. So anyway, that's sort of my thoughts on painting. This room will be dry tomorrow. I'll give it a sand. Then I'll hit the uh, ceiling with uh, ceiling paint and we'll carry on from there. Hopefully that works out good. So once again, thanks for watching.